Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a really quite interesting beer and we're going to continue once again with this series of December beers that I'm doing for you from Sweden. Really quite enjoying this series I have to admit. But this is a brewery I've heard some really really good things about so very excited to try them. So we're going to go to Monk's Cafe in Stockholm and we're going to have a taste of one of the versions of their Blackjack. These ones are always Imperial Porters but the one we have tonight is a special limited edition from 2014 and it comes in at 9.7% and it should be a pretty awesome beer. It had a rating of 96 on Rate Beer when I was reading about it earlier. Supposed to be very, very nice. So as is usual with my beer reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual website links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that I'll do from Monk's Cafe. The very first time I'm trying one of their beers. Uh, and there's also my usual social media things down there as well. The Facebook, the Twitter and the Untapped. Feel free to get in touch with me through whatever means you wish. Always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos. And to my Swedish viewers, I will apologise if any of my Swedish pronunciations aren't quite right. I'm still trying to learn Swedish. And please do let me know, though, some of the other Swedish breweries you'd like me to have a look at. Some of the Swedish beer I've tried so far has really been top class. So really, I will take your suggestions and I will try them because some of your beer is really, really good. So for this review as well, I have to dedicate it to my friend Sean and his new wife, Laura. They're getting married on the day that this video airs, which will be the 18th of December. December 2015 so a big congratulations to you guys but anyway let's get on to the review part of this video so to tell you about Monk's Cafe as I said Monk's Cafe are based in Stockholm and they were founded back in 2008 they've got six restaurants and two breweries in the city and these this this wide variety of restaurants they really encompass a wide variety of food and drink and in addition to their two breweries with restaurants they've also got the American bar which is in Svea Vegan this one serves American beer bourbon and American food and they do beer taste Things. They've got the wine room on Lila Niigatan, which has over 150 types of wine at any one time. This one's actually housed in a building from the 1600s and they also do wine tasting there. There's the Whiskey Paradise on Munkbron number 15 and they've got a few hundred types of whiskey there as well. Uh, they always do whiskey lectures and whiskey tastings and stuff and there's also the Stockholm Bar which is on Lila Niigatan as well and this serves beer exclusively from St Eric's Brewery. That brewery is a really quite nice one as well actually. The head brewer there, Yester Hydrick, seems very nice and she sent me some nice messages after I sent her my St. Eric's Big Review. So do go and check them out as well. But as I said, they do have two breweries and the first of these is in Wallingatten at number 38. And this was the first brewery in Sweden where the public were actually allowed to be involved in the brewing process. And the head brewer is Charles Casino and he runs brewing courses and has taught hundreds of the Monk's Cafe guests about brewing beer and a lot of them actually go home and homebrew. That's why many people go and take part in these classes that they do there. But most of the beer that you drink from Monk's Cafe is actually brewed during these brewing courses. They do they brew a lot of their draft beer on site, but they brew some of their bottled beers. This one, for example, was brewed at Eskilstuna Ulkulter in Eskilstuna. But they also have a separate brewery, a second one, which is called the Monk's Porterhouse in Munkbron at number 11. And this is a building that dates back to the 16th century as well. It's probably in the same building as the Whiskey Paradise, actually. But this is in the old town of Stockholm. And as you might guess, this brewery focuses almost exclusively on the brewing of porters and stouts and they often invite guest brewers from other breweries to brew with them as well. Quite a few esteemed kind of craft beer brewers have gone and joined these guys and Monk's Cafe are quite famous actually in the Swedish craft beer scene. But the restaurant in this pub actually also has 56 different beers on tap at any one time and interestingly all the brewery beers or all the brewery recipes are actually made public so you can go and check that out on the website. When I checked it out they hadn't updated it. I think the last ones were from 2012, so that's something that they maybe need to update, but very, very cool brew. And as I say, if you find yourself in the Stockholm area, if you're a beer lover, Yin, this is probably something that you want to check out. I'm very excited to go to Stockholm now, which will probably be next year, but I'm very excited to go and actually try some of these beers. So without further ado then, we'll actually get on to the tasting section of this beer. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. It's quite simply presented. Like I told you, this is a 9.7% Imperial Porter. It's called Blackjack. Um, it's a special edition version from 2014. I do have the list of the specs of this beer as well, so I'll just read those for you. The bottled version of this one, like I told you, was brewed at Eskilstuna Ulkulter, while the, the draft version was actually brewed in the, the house. I think it was the Porter house that it was brewed in. The malt base in this one is Paleo Crystal Light Caramel Munich 
pale chocolate and also chocolate malts and it's hopped with Fugel and Haller Tower hops and some of the versions of this apparently have a Cascade hop in them too so they can be pretty interesting but it's a plain bottle cap on this one too as you can see but yeah, it should be a very nice beer for us to try. And as I say, one of the highest rated breweries in Sweden. I think this is actually the highest rated brewery that comes from Sweden if you go and check out Rate Beer and Beer Advocate. As I say, as I always say, those sites very rarely lead you wrong. So without further ado then, let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. So, as you can see, there's a nice smoky opening in this one. You can actually smell a good bit of fruit coming off this as you open it up. So this should be a very very nice beer oh it actually looks really nice really good looking beer it's poured really nice and easy as well some of these old these beers you can get them exploding a little bit on you I've had that happen once or twice when I've been filming these reviews but that's a very very nice pour so as you can see this beer has poured pretty much an ebony black if I bring the light down and just look at it through the light yeah, there's very little light coming through that. Just a little bit of a ruby edge to it, but absolutely nothing coming through. There's about a three-quarter finger of a frothy, kind of beigey tan head. It looks absolutely beautiful. There's some big bubbles sticking towards the bottom of the glass on this one, but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head. But there's not much more you can say about it. There's no transparency, but it looks like an absolutely beautiful beer. And from what I smell so far, it smells pretty damn good too. So let's have a proper look at this. So, as you would expect from an Imperial Porter, there's a lot of nice dark roasted aromas coming out of this one. You can actually pick up a little bit of the fruit as well. There's a, a nice kind of interesting red ester coming out of this one. It smells quite candied, but at the same time there's some of the, the slightly sharper plums and raisins coming out of this one. Figs, I find, always give you quite a smooth, almost candied fruit aroma, but there's some nice roasted plums, or not roasted plums, just sweet plums and raisins in there but there's a big roasted malt character to this one you can get a little bit of a brown breadiness from it but mainly it's a nice sweet chocolate I think that's coming out of this beer there's a bit of caramel in there as well some darker molasses all of the things that you would expect of course maybe I think there is a kind of woody or nutty sort of infused aroma coming out of this one as well and a little bit of coffee definitely a little bit of a kind of roasted coffee in there, but that's very mild, but you can pick it up. The malty character in this one is more about the sweet chocolate and the sort of caramel and molasses, or treacle as we would call it back home in Scotland. Molasses is more the American word, the American way they describe these things. But yeah, this is a really beautiful smelling beer. The, tro the, the, the red fruity esters in this actually come out quite nicely. But yeah, it's big roasted malt, a little bit of... Uh, quite a big bit actually of sweet kind of milky chocolate come out of this one some nice caramel it smells quite toasted as well the caramel but there's some darker treacle and molasses there really really interesting beer this one so as I always say with the beers do give them a good smell before you actually get stuck into them and this one smells really beautiful you can the, the chocolate aroma in this is just really nice so without further ado then let's get stuck into this beer so this is the 2014 version of the blackjack from Monk's Cafe in Stockholm in Sweden. Skål! And that's really nice actually, very very wet mouthfeel and it's quite interesting when, it, when you first take it in you get a little bit of the fruity esters and it comes in quite sharp on the front of the tongue and then it just spreads out over the, the, the rest of your palate and you get the nice kind of roasted coffee or roasted bready malts coming out they just kind of spread from the front of your tongue all the way towards the back so just pay attention to that when you try this beer but don't think too much about the flavours when you take the first sip you have to let your whole palate adjust properly but yeah this is a really really nice beer if you do get the chance to try this you will enjoy it guaranteed mm. So we think a little bit more about the flavours. You've got a nice, quite light, bready character that just blankets the middle of your palate there. It is very light and it's quite a sort of brown, very dark brown toasted bread there. That just blankets the middle of your tongue. And as you would expect with a porter in comparison to a stout, you've got quite a light, 
and quite wet mouth through here. Usually the stouts are a bit more creamy and a bit more oily. This one's just got a nice, quite light, wet mouth feel. And that comes out in that light, bready malt base there that just blankets your tongue. Really beautiful beer, this. Can't say that enough. Top class, and I've not even really thought too much about it yet. It's beautiful. Mm. But yeah, in the middle of your palate, on top of that bread, there's a lot of chocolate coming out there. The chocolate actually has quite a bit of sweetness to it. It comes out a little bit more like a kind of dark chocolate flavour actually, but it's it's really nice. You can get, if you go right down the middle of the tongue too, you can get some of the sweeter caramel and as you move a little bit further out from the middle of your palate, that's where the kind of roasted coffee flavours are coming out. And the middle of your palate is actually quite bitter and it has a little bit of dryness to it, but it fits with the, with the overall flavour of the beer. Absolutely beautifully done. Mm. There's a little bit of a licorice flavour coming out in this one too. It just has this really underlying licorice flavour in the beer. It's, it's really, really is beautifully done. There's a whole lot of stuff going on in this beer. So if you're like me and you like beers that make you think a little bit about the flavour and think, what am I actually tasting in here? Then this is one that you're really going to like. It's a beautiful porter and you can enjoy it without thinking too much about it. But it's a beer that is that good that you really should to enjoy it properly, I would say. Yeah, there's a lot going on in this beer. But if you move to the hoppy parts of the beer now, if you go to the back corners of the palate, there's an earthy character there. And I would say it's quite smooth. As you, you come towards the front of the tongue, it maybe becomes a little bit more grassy, actually. The hops in this one, like I say, were are Fugel and Hallertau hops. With the Hallertau hop, you will get a kind of smooth, grassy character. But at the back corner of the palate, you'll get a sort of... Um, you'll get a sort of kind of nice earthy character but the front you'll get that nice kind of smooth grassiness that comes out of these German hops the nice noble hop character there the Fugel hop I always found has a kind of ashy taste to it and that's probably complementing the flavours that you're getting in the middle of the palate too mm. but yeah it works Really nicely. The Fugel Hop, I have to admit, is one that I've always found works really well in dark beers, but in golden ales and things like that, not so much. The only beer I've had that worked well in was the, the Old World IPA from Brewdog. That was really nice and it worked for that. But it doesn't, the Fugel Hop for me is more of a, a dark beer hop and it works really well in this one, I have to admit. But as I say, around the edges of the palate, there's some nice quite smooth earthy hop characters, they're a little bit bitter just in the back corner but as you move further forward it gets smoother and smoother and smoother then you just go around the front of the tongue and there is just a little bit of a kind of grassy or almost hay flavour out of this one but if you go just behind the front of the tongue that's where these nice red fruity esters are coming out in this beer. Mm. Yeah, and I would say there's a good mix of things in there but I would say there is a bit of the figgy element and a bit of the sort of candied fruit flavour in there. As I say, the candied fruit flavours that I get from a lot of beers remind me of those little heart sweets in the, the Haribo Star Mix. And there is a little bit of that there, but the fruity esters that are coming out of this one are quite a bit sharper. It's plums and raisin flavours that you're getting out of this one. Maybe some figs or uh, the figs. The figs kind of give you the, the base of that, but then on top of that you've got some of the sharper esters, the plums and the raisins like I said, but overall the flavour of this beer goes together really well. The thing that's lingering in the flavour is the earthy hop I would say, and then you've got that roasted, slightly coffee flavour in the middle of your tongue. The chocolate is sitting there too, but the roasted flavour in the malt paste is the thing that's really kind of, that's the really prominent thing in the aftertaste. The chocolatey and uh, the sort of chocolatey and caramel flavours and the little licorice is actually quite prominent in this too. The licorice kind of lingers on the tongue there also. But overall, I mean, in terms of the flavour, this is a really, really nice beer. And like I said, you can enjoy this one. There's a lot going on in it, but you can enjoy this one without thinking too much about it. But to enjoy it properly, I'd say you've really got to think about it and appreciate all the flavours that are actually in this beer. There's a hell of a lot going on in it. So do think about that when you try this one, if you do get the chance to try it. Very limited edition beer. But yeah, um, in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, mid-bodied, probably pushing the full-bodied one actually. If it was a stout, I could see it being full-bodied, but somewhere in the middle of those two I would say. Carbonation is really quite smooth in this one actually. Yeah, quite an oily mouthfeel this one as well but at the same time quite light. 
There's a big malty character. There's a good bit of sweetness to it as well. The chocolate, the licorice, and some of the caramel has a really big sweetness. But there's a good malty bitterness in there. Like I say, the coffee flavours are really lingering into the aftertaste and they build as you go through this beer. You'll feel them becoming more prominent as you move into the aftertaste. But there's also a little bit of dry character from the hoppiness, but otherwise it's very smooth and perhaps just a little bit of a nice red fruity ester in there as well. Really, really nicely done. The juicy character from the ester is a nice complement to the flavour as well. It actually goes well with the kind of licorice flavours as actually so. I would say that, but I mean, overall, this is a really, really beautiful beer. From what I've been told, anything you try from Monk's Cafe, you're going to enjoy. Very, very good brewery. Really highly regarded in the Swedish craft beer circles, actually. So I definitely need to try and review some more of their beers. Next time, hopefully I can get something that is, for example, you know, like a double IPA. One of the kind of uh, light beers, the sort of light beer styles rather than a dark one. I would definitely want to review more of the dark beers in the future as well. Though. Very, very good brewery on the basis of this beer. Just pick a style of beer you like from Monk's Cafe and you will enjoy it. So yeah, awesome beer for me to review today. My very first one from Monk's Cafe. As I said, a big shout out to my friend Sean and, who, and his new wife Laura who will get married on the day that this beer video is published. So a big shout out to you guys. Enjoy the rest of your life together. But for those of you watching here, I hope you've enjoyed the beer review. As always, let me, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you're enjoying this series of Swedish reviews. Until the next one, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Follow me on social media and don't be scared to get in touch. Always interesting to hear from you guys. But until the next beer review, Slanja just now.